What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Matthew 16 verse 26. What dark secrets lie behind the incredible and melodious notes of a violin? Today we will travel back in time to ancient Italy, the birthplace of two violinists unique in their essence, Giuseppe Tardini and Niccolò Paganini. These two figures emerged during the peak of classical music. Though from different eras, both possessed extraordinary talents, talents so unmatched that to this day, no other mortal has been able to equal them, let alone come close. Both musicians were far ahead of their time, with techniques and abilities that seemed to come from another world, unique musical pieces that seemed to be performed by angels themselves, or perhaps by something much darker and more sinister. But why was Niccolò Paganini nicknamed the Devil's Violinist? And what about Giuseppe Tardini, who composed one of the most enigmatic pieces in history after a tormenting dream? And why did he write sonatas to the Devil himself? Is it possible that some of the great masters of classical music made a deal with the devil to obtain their musical genius? And you, what would you sacrifice to attain perfection? Would you make a pact with the devil for unparalleled talent? Comment below. Ephesians 6 verse 12, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Could there be a deeper connection between the violin and the world of the supernatural and mysterious? The violin has been associated for centuries with a dark and mysterious legend, it is the instrument of the devil. It is said that those who listen to the melodies of a solitary violin in the middle of the night are not hearing earthly music. No, they are hearing the whisper of lost souls and blood-sealed pacts. It is said that the violin is capable of conjuring emotions that go beyond human. Wandering musicians tell stories of encounters with strange violinists at crossroads, where the moonlight filters through the twisted branches of trees. These violinists, with a somber appearance and penetrating gaze, not only offer concerts that mesmerize listeners but also offer mysterious deals that lead those who accept them to the pinnacle of success, only to be trapped in a world between reality and nightmare. It is said that Niccolò Paganini was more than a mere mortal playing the strings of his instrument. His talent was so extraordinary that for many, he was a force of nature, and his gift seemed to come from a divine, or rather, diabolical origin. From an early age, Paganini showed prodigious musical talent. It is said that at the age of seven, he already mastered the violin in a way that left the most experienced masters dumbfounded. When Paganini took the stage, something magical happened. His imposing presence, with his wild hair and piercing gaze, captivated the audience from the very beginning. And then, when he began to play, the world seemed to fade away, leaving only him and his violin. What made Paganini so extraordinary? Some said it was his impeccable technique, his ability to perform incredibly fast and complex passages with astonishing ease. But it was truly said that Paganini had made a pact with the devil himself to obtain his incredible musical ability, and this is one of the craziest things you will hear, as the legend does not begin with him, but with his mother, Teresa Bacciardo. It is said that Teresa had a strange dream one night, a dream that left her trembling with terror upon waking. In that dream, a supernatural being appeared to Teresa, surrounded by a somber aura. This being told her that her son, Niccolo, would be a prodigy with the violin, that his music would enchant kings and emperors, but that this gift would come with a price. Your son will be blessed with the greatest talent the world has ever known, whispered the being in the dream, while holding a violin that shimmered with a supernatural light. But this gift will not be free. A shadow will follow in his footsteps, a shadow that will claim his soul when his final hour arrives. Terrified by this vision, Teresa woke with a racing heart and prayed fervently for her son's protection. But fate was already sealed, and Niccolò Paganini would become the most famous violin virtuoso of all time. But here's the thing, the stories about Paganini's violin were even more chilling. It was said that this violin seemed to extend his soul through every note, containing something more than wood and strings. The legend goes that Paganini made a pact with Lucifer himself in pursuit of his musical virtuosity. 
It was said that on a dark night, at a solitary crossroads, the young violinist encountered a mysterious figure shrouded in shadows. The being, with eyes shining like burning coals, offered him a violin made of dark wood and silver strings, an instrument vibrating with supernatural energy. With this violin, you will be the greatest that has ever existed, the being whispered with a chilling voice. But in return, your soul will belong to me when your final hour comes. Paganini, driven by the thirst for fame and glory, accepted the deal. From that moment on, his talent became legendary, his concerts acclaimed worldwide. But there was always a dark shadow following him, reminding him of the price of his success. It is said that his violin contained the soul of a beautiful young woman, sacrificed in a dark ritual to grant the musician his incomparable talent. Some speculate that it was a gift from Satan himself, delivered to Nicolò's mother as a pre-agreement, a warning of what would come next. But it was on a dark and misty night that the whole truth came to light. During one of his most memorable performances, Paganini's shadow came to life. As he played with heartbreaking passion, his silhouette projected on the wall began to distort, taking the form of a demon with twisted horns and a serpentine tail. The audience was paralyzed with terror as the demonic shadow seemed to dance to the music of Paganini, moving with palpable malevolence. Witnesses swore they could feel the demon's breath on their necks, whispers of temptation and promises of power in their ears. Was this the price of Paganini's pact with supernatural forces? A shadow that haunted him at every performance, reminding him of the dark deal he had made for his talent? No one knew for sure, but the legend of the devil's violinist came vividly to life that night as never before. But most unsettling of all is that this violin, the same one that resonated in Europe's most prestigious theaters, now resides in an unexpected place. At the heart of the Municipal Palace of Italy, among works of art and ancient treasures, rests Paganini's violin of infernal pact. Guards claim that on full moon nights, when shadows lengthen and the wind whispers ancient secrets, the sound of Paganini's violin can be heard in the empty halls. A haunting melody, full of passion and desperation, seeming to resonate from the very abyss. Some say it is the spirit of Paganini himself, condemned to play his violin eternally as penance for his infernal pact. Others believe it is the devil himself, reminding all those who dare to listen that no deal with him goes without its price. Some dare to say that Paganini's violin still contains the soul of that beautiful young woman, sacrificed. Others assert that the devil himself watches over this relic of power, waiting for the right moment to claim what is his. So if you decide to visit the Municipal Palace of Italy and see that ancient violin, think twice before getting too close. For you never know what dark secrets and forbidden melodies could be unleashed if the strings of this infernal instrument are played once more. But Paganini was not alone in this dark fame. Giuseppe Tardini, the Venetian genius of the violin, was also the subject of rumors and legends about infernal pacts. His masterpiece, The Devil's Trill Sonata, composed after a terrifying vision in the night, seems to capture the very essence of the struggle between good and evil, the divine and the infernal. A manuscript in Tartini's own hand tells the story. One night, he fell into a deep sleep, one that would completely change his life. This is what the letter left by the musician says. One night, I dreamed that I had made a pact with the devil in exchange for my soul. Everything was fulfilled according to my desires, as my new servant took care of it. I wanted to embarrass him because I did not believe that he was better than me at the violin, so I dreamed that I gave him my violin to play some notes. This being took it with his chilling and long hands, and adopting a strange position, it was to my amazement when I heard such a singular and beautiful sonata, performed with such art and intelligence that I could not conceive anything comparable to it. I felt so much surprise, rapture, and pleasure that I was left breathless. This sensation pulled me out of the dream. I immediately took my violin out of its case, hoping to recreate the sounds. But in vain. The piece I wrote then may be the best I have ever composed, but it is far from the one that had delighted me so much in my dreams, so much so that if I had had a different way of making a living, I would have completely abandoned music out of shame for my performance. 
The result of this nocturnal inspiration was, The Devil's Trill Sonata, a piece that seems to emerge from the depths of the soul itself. In this work, Tardini captured the essence of his dream, a frenetic dance of violins, a dialogue between the virtuoso and the dark being who had granted him his talent. Many accept the theory that Tartini's work aims to tell the story of Lucifer. At first, all is calm and harmonious, when Lucifer was an angel, but in the middle it becomes gloomy due to feelings of envy, being expelled to earth, when, towards the end of the work, everything becomes noisy, expressing the hatred and pain that characterize hell. Would you dare to listen to a piece of this melody? Pay attention to the passion and intensity with which Tardini unfolds his virtuosity, as if he were in direct communication with forces beyond our understanding. The debate about the truth of these stories is passionate. Some firmly maintain that figures like Niccolo Paganini and Giuseppe Tardini truly sealed pacts with dark forces, exchanging their souls for the unmatched musical ability they demonstrated. Other classical musicians have been associated with similar pacts throughout history. Robert Johnson, the legendary blues guitarist of the 20th century, who supposedly met the devil at a crossroads to acquire his virtuosity. Or the Hungarian pianist Franz Liszt, whose superhuman ability on the keyboard led to rumors of a pact with dark forces. Is it possible that the intensity and passion we hear in the compositions of these musicians come from a source beyond the earthly? Or are they simply the product of brilliant minds that have explored the limits of their art? Whatever the answer, one thing is clear. The pact with the devil remains a fascinating and mysterious part of the history of classical music. The next time you hear the whisper of a violin in the night, ask yourself who is behind that music. Is it a simple human musician, or is it something darker and ancient? For in the world of the violin, where the strings vibrate with the power of the unknown, the line between the divine and the infernal blurs, and mystery lurks in every note. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, don't forget to write in the comments. We invite you to share, subscribe, and like. See you in the next video.